Hello everyone and welcome to another exciting Dark Souls run. We are going to do a full run from New Game 1 to New Game 7. This time we're going to play as the various mobs around Dark Souls. To specify, this means I'm going to be using the gear of the various mobs around the map. I am not going to be using what they drop, as some drop gear that they do not use. However, if they hold it, if they wear it, I can use it. I am not limited in terms of rings or other usable items either, though I do try to keep the usable items within character of the mob. I also want it to be in cosplay as much as possible, so the various mobs that I've chosen are going to be humanoid mobs that, although I'm much different in size from some of them, I can fully dress up as. That being said, let's head on into the run. So on this run, we are limited to the giant armor the giant's shield, and the giant's halberd. Giants do not use a talisman, but they also have access to great heal and wrath of the gods. So we'll use any talisman we want to access those miracles. I was lost on how to make this run interesting. We did get there, so bear with me. I've got something great in store that you probably already saw in the thumbnail. But heading into the run initially, I was surprised to see that the Giant's Halberd had a lightning damage effect. That is something I did not know, so I thought, well, that's going to be fun. I also did not yet have Wrath of the Gods or Great Heal excerpts, so I have to obtain those on this run. So that's a little bit of homework. So we killed the Asylum Demon, we headed to Firelink Shrine, and I began the process of unlocking Rhea of Thorlin so I could buy those miracles I needed. So to make that happen, we head through the Berg and we deal with the Tauros Demon with that extra lightning effect. He is a very easy fight, even on New Game 6. Heading a little bit past him, we go past the boar and we grab the Basement Tower Key. We can then backtrack and make our way through the Lower Undead Berg all the way to Capra. With a 100% damage reduction shield and a Pokey Pokey Richie Halberd, we are able to kill the dogs and deal with Capra. This fight is not that hard. And then I headed back down to Firelink to see that Rhea had shown up. And at this point, I took a little break. I just, this run felt uninspired. I'm running around with epic gear on New Game 6, mind you, but uh, nobody cares. It's easy on New Game 6 with good gear. And I just thought, what's the hook? What is the thing for this run? So I took a little break and recorded my six and a half hour Munch's Odyssey video. I played a little bit of Dark Souls 3, that's another video for another time. And while contemplating the lore of the giants, it finally struck me what we should do. You see, the giants are the most cursed race in all of Dark Souls. They always get the short end of the stick. Even when things were all really good in the world, they were like in chains and servants to Gwyn. And so the thought, occurred to me, let's do a Cursed Calamity Ring run. Now with my epiphany complete, I went down to the depths, I died and got cursed on purpose, and I equipped the Calamity Ring, and we would stay like this for the rest of the run. Gwyn be with us. Before getting into the rest of this monster of a run, and boys, let me tell you, it's a doozy, I want to introduce this week's partner. This week we're partnering with soulward.org. Soulward.org is a counseling service that is quite special. They're a little different than BetterHelp, which is also a fantastic service to utilize. But Soulward actually has counselors offering their services for free. They help people who don't have insurance or can't afford therapy, whatever the case may be, they're gonna help people out no matter what because they don't want anyone left behind. But that being said, they're giving away a lot of their services for free when typically they would charge a very heavily discounted rate of $75 an hour, which if you know therapy and counseling rates, that's a fantastic rate. And they're not even charging that. They're doing it all for free. So we're asking people to go to soulward.org and click on one of the donation links there. Also, if you're watching this and you need counseling or therapy, but you don't have insurance, you don't know where to turn for counseling, feel free to click on the application link to apply to be one of their clients. Mental health is important and everyone needs help. So if this sounds like a worthy cause to you, check it out. Otherwise, let's get back into the run. Now with this run figured out, it was time to finish unlocking Rhea and to grab those missing miracles. So we headed down to Pinwheel and even cursed with the Calamity Ring on New Game 6, Pinwheel is still a breeze. We defeat him on the first try. We just had to rush him and take him out before he could hit us. 
Still feeling amped from the pinwheel fight, we head down to Patches and let him kick us down the hole to meet Rhea. I don't think Vince and Nika will be that tough, but I find out quick, no, they're gonna, they're gonna one hit me. <laughs> so on our second try, we isolate them a little bit better and we take them out. Now a little bit more wary, we head up to fight Petrus, but we kill him before he can do anything. I rush over to the undead chapel because I remember I haven't killed the Berenique Knight just yet. But when I arrive, I find that he has just automatically been moved on as Rhea is there praying and we buy the missing miracles. Now we're ready to play the game proper. I find out that I get one hit by the channeler, but on our second try, we take him out. We then kill the Trek and then we head up to the gargoyles. Because I'm cursed, I can't summon any NPCs as I can't turn human. I am a little worried about the gargoyles. I think they're going to one hit me and I'm right but I can also rush them and take out the first gargoyle before the second one even spawns with this nice hefty damage with the electric bonus. Though I am so frustrated to say that I did not hit record on the run that I actually killed the gargoyles. Yeah, I dropped some explicatives, but what can you do? We move on, we ring the bell. I was terrified of Quelag, but we were actually able to map out her moves pretty well and get in our heavy hits every time we wanted them, and this fight actually wasn't that difficult. I ring the second bell, and before heading through Sen's fortress, I decide to kill Sif right away because he's one I usually forget. Even though we are cursed with the Calamity Ring, having a shield that can mitigate 100% physical damage makes Sif easy. We just chase down the puppy and kill him. Nothing to see here. Heading into Sen's, I find out the hard way that these snakes will one-hit me, but the lightning throwing doesn't hurt me that bad, nor does getting clipped by some of the traps. I'm curious if I can survive getting hit by the boulder, but I never find out as I'm able to dodge it both times. I'm a little worried about the lightning slinging snake at the end hitting me in the back as I finish Sen's fortress, but I've learned on previous runs that his aim is terrible. He misses us and we finish Sen's on our first try. We work our way up to the boulder throwing giant and take him out, and then we make our way over to the iron golem. We misjudge our spacing on the first try. We get grabbed on our second try. We are accidentally kicked off on our third try, but we knock the golem off the edge on the fourth try. After this, I take the elevator up to Honor Londo, and next I wanted to find a way to make the rafters a little harder and to have some fun. So I put on the Dusk Crown Ring, which cuts my life even more in half. At this point, I'm at 25% health, and we use the extra castings of Wrath of the Gods to knock the Painted Guardians off the rafters, and this was easy first try, and we had a lot of fun. On my Tranquil Walk of Peace run, we learned how to deal with these archers. However, I can't afford to get hit once but using all the tricks we've learned on our previous playthrough, they're pretty easy. Now it was time for the get good fight. We had to go against Ornstein and Smo, and we died and died and died and died and died. However, the strategy was to isolate Smo, kill him while Ornstein couldn't hit because Fat Boy was in the way, and then fight Large Ornstein. But Large Ornstein was very difficult, whereas Large Smo is much easier. So we ran it back, did it one more time, and we ended up beating the game against Large Smo, who's a very predictable foe and easier to deal with. With teleportation unlocked, we drop the Lord Vessel and unlock all of our paths. I decide to start with Seath first, since I don't care if I get cursed. We head through Duke's archives, we have our obligatory death, we make our way through Duke's archives, and it's actually not as difficult as I expected it to be. When I actually got to face Seath, it dawned on me that I still need to use the Curse Bite Ring, because if my Curse Bar fills up, it is an automatic death. But fighting this slow boy is very easy to bait out the right attacks and we're able to put him down no problem. Our next big fight was against the Four Kings. Now, they are kind of an RNG problem. If they grab me, I, it's an instant kill. However, I am able to take them out pretty quick with really good damage. And so it's just a matter of killing each king before the next one spawns and hoping we get lucky with the RNG not to get grabbed. There was one run where I got all the way to the last king and then he grabbed me, <laughs> but uh, we were able to uh, finish the fight easy enough. Then I headed down to Grave Lord Nito. I was hoping Wrath of the Gods would count as divine damage and could permanently kill the skeletons, but it doesn't. So I got back into my little nook that I discovered on previous runs, and while hiding in there, we were able to kill Nito. His miasmic attack did not one-shot me if I had my shield up, so we could tank that and finish him off. Ceaseless discharge was barely worth mentioning. We grabbed the clothes, we ran back, we knocked him off the ledge. Honestly, I felt a little guilty at this point, like maybe this run wasn't challenging 
engaging enough or viewable enough. I was almost tempted to inspire some more drama than was necessary. However, I decided to take the long way around and handle both the Centipede Demon and the Demon Fire Sage before hitting the Bed of Chaos. Fighting the Demon Fire Sage, he actually deals physical damage, not fire damage, so our shield can mitigate all of his damage. And again, he's a really easy, predictable boss, and he dies. I think surely the Centipede Demon's going to be a problem, and don't get me wrong, he kind of had this double hit mechanic that went through my shield. But once we danced around enough, uh, we didn't die in the lava as quickly as I thought we would. And uh, again, another predictable, easy boss, once you close the distance, he went down. Next was the Bed of Chaos, and this time, instead of using firebombs or arrows or anything like that, I actually walked to both sides of the Bed of Chaos. I learned on my Tranquil Walk of Pizza run that this was doable and not as hard as people make it seem, but after that, we do reload and jump from the front to take out the Bed of Chaos. I was tempted to continue this build on into the DLCs, however, the run doesn't require it, and we're doing an all-boss, all-NPC, all-mini-boss run as a Black Knight next, so I'm saving my energy for that new game seven run. That being said, it was time to head down to Gwyn and finish the game. Gwyn has lightning resistance, and with the great shield, I can't parry him to death. I try a few different strategies on him, just kind of learning his moves, learning what to do, and eventually we settle on the fact that we just have to go hitless. So I unequip my shield, two-hand the halberd, and we get to work. It's a little tricky, but Gwyn goes down. Thinking narratively, what's the story for this cursed cataclysmic giant that we just played as? And my thought was, you know, this is a giant that's had enough of humans. He's done being a slave, a servant. The reign of humans needs to come to an end, so he casts the world in darkness. And yeah, that's the run. I wish I had this figured out since I started because we missed out on the Asylum Demon, the Tauros Demon, and the Capra Demon, but let's be honest, all those are pretty simple fights compared to everything else we did on this run. Now I'm looking forward to what we've all been waiting for, at least I have, which is my New Game 7 Black Knight cosplay run. And I think I'm going to do that run with no HUD on. I think that'll be a fun little challenge and we'll make a pretty cool video. I'll probably upload the full gameplay. If you enjoyed this video and you want to make sure you don't miss the next one, then don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. And one last reminder of our soulward.org partnership. Mental health is important for everyone. That being said, I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.